Hello Tigers and welcome to the TMN TV newscast for Wednesday, May 1st, 2019. Stay tuned for the latest news at Fort Hayes State University and around Northwest Kansas and the nation. I am Lauren Davis and Jenna Holly will be here shortly with a look at what's going on around the globe. And Haley White will fill you in on what's happening in the sports world. But first, here's what's making news in Tigerland. Mother Nature gave the area its first taste of severe spring weather Sunday evening. The National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center listed two tornadoes touched down in northwest Kansas during the evening, one in Wallace County and the other in Sherman County. There were no reports of damage with either twister. Counties in the western portion of the state also saw large hail with reports of two-inch hail in Sherman and Cheyenne counties. High winds also came with the storms reaching 75 miles per hour in Nest City. Straight line winds also res were responsible for snapped power poles in Wallace County. More than an inch of rain fell in Ellis County with storms, with one report of nearly two inches north of Hayes. Nearly two inches of rain also was reported along the Nest Trigo County line. Storms also caused damage in southeast Kansas Sunday as well. High winds toppled multiple power poles and damaged a church and tombstones in that region. Rain chances continue throughout the weekend along with mild temperatures. There are slight chances of rain Thursday night through Monday with highs in the 60s and lower 70s. Last Wednesday, FHSU students dressed for a cause. Coordinators on campus helped put together a local Denim Day, which is an international day of protest against sex sexual assault. TMN reporter Corey Lynn says the local project began following a 1998 rape in Italy, in which a judge later ruled the victim was wearing tight jeans at the time of the incident and would have needed to help the suspect to remove them. The FHSU campus teamed with the Women's Leadership Project to make Denim Day happen locally. Organizers on campus said the event was used to bring attention to misunderstandings surrounding sexual assault and to shed light on victim blaming. A Kansas Supreme Court ruling Friday made national headlines. The court sided with abortion rights activists who say women have the right to make their own medical decisions. But Republican leaders in the state and the U.S. railed against the court's ruling. U.S. Senator Jerry Moran said the decision underscores the urgent need for federal legislation that, was that will protect innocent life at all stages, according to the Wichita Eagle. U.S. Representative Roger Marshall, a doctor from Great Men, said the ruling was plain wrong and deeply shameful, while Kansas House Speaker Ron Reichman said the state Supreme Court deviated from pre precedent to make a political statement. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly praised the court's decision, saying it affirmed the right to an abortion within the framework of the Kansas Constitution. The ruling dealt with a 2015 lawsuit in which the Center for Reproductive Rights challenged the decision to ban a common second trimester abortion procedure. Former Governor Sam Brownback signed Senate Bill 95 into law during his tenure, which blocked the dilation and evacuation procedure known as dismemberment abortion. Two law enforcement officers with the Rice County Sheriff's Office were shot while serving a warrant for a man's arrest on Monday. The suspect, David Madden, 37, shot Rice County Under Sheriff Chad Murphy four times, according to the Wichita Eagle. Law enforcement believe Madden then drove to his father's home where he allegedly shot and killed his 65-year-old father, Thomas Madden. When Rice County Sheriff Bryant Evans arrived at the home, the suspect shot Evans in the leg. A shootout with other officers ensued. Off Officials believe David Madden eventually took his own life. Sheriff Evans was treated and released from a hospital while Under Sheriff Murphy was last reported in critical condition at a Wichita hospital. David Madden has a long history with law enforcement, including assault and firearms charges. He also was a suspect in the disappearance of Megan Fogelsong, a 21-year-old who was last seen in Alden in 2015. She never has been found. Student Government Association members are looking into cost-saving measures for FHSU students. The group recently passes a resolution to implement Open Educational Resources, or OERs. The OERs are free or reduced-price textbooks students use in a class. A survey given to students showed 60% spend $200 or more per semester on books. For more on the resolution and SGA's cost-cutting measures, see TMN reporters Corey Lynn's story at TigerMediaNet.com. When we return from this short break, Jenna will be here with news from around the globe.
I think there's a perception out there that web and mobile application development is this field where you sit behind a computer all day and code. And that's not it at all, right? And there's even a perception out there that geek is bad. But I think students should embrace their inner geek. We don't code all day. We look at issues, we look at problems, and try to figure out the pieces of the puzzle and how to put them together to build things. I was able to learn JavaScript, HTML, CSS, PHP, just kind of whole nine yards with that. So I just, I really enjoyed the full program that they offered here. Anything that you're interested in, the field of web and mobile application development, there's a value to. Um, there's nothing like what we have in the informatics department. If you choose to take everything in the buffet that we offer, you'll be very well prepared for any type of job opportunity that's out there. Hello Tigers, I'm Jenna Hawley and here's what's going on around the globe. Students at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte fell victim to a campus shooting late Tuesday that left two people dead and four others wounded. Gunshots began before 6 p.m. The university tweeted, run, hide, fight, after receiving calls about the shooting. The suspect, Tristan Terrell, was taken into custody without incident. According to CNN, Terrell is facing multiple charges, including two counts of murder, four counts of attempted murder, four counts of assault with a deadly weapon, with intent to kill, possession of a firearm on educational property, and discharging a firearm on educational property. Authorities escorted students out of buildings with their hands ab above their heads, while university officials sent an alert to students to follow instructions from officers and warning others to stay away from campus until an all clear was given. The parents of the man who allegedly opened fire in a California synagogue have broken their silence. According to NPR, the Ernest family describes being shocked and saddened by the attack in a San Diego suburb. They wrote, our sadness pales in comparison to the grief and anguish our son has caused for so many innocent people. To our great shame, he is now part of the history of evil that has been perpetrated on Jewish people for centuries. According to NPR, the Ernest said their 19-year-old son, John T. Ernest, was raised in a family that rejected hate and taught love. Sri Lanka has now banned any face co covering in the country. The ban prevents individual identification to be hindered in a way that threatens national security, according to a statement given by the country's president. The ban took effect Monday and applies to anything covering the face, which could include burghas, niqabs, and helmets or masks. The presidential statement said the president has made this decision to strengthen national security as well as to not inconvenience any demographic group so as to create a peaceful and harmonious society in Sri Lanka. According to CNN, at least one Sri Lankan hotel reportedly has banned facial coverings after the attack. The move follows a series of bombings on Easter Sunday that killed over 250 people and wounded at least 500 in churches and hotels in the country. N Northern Mozambique faces a much worse situation than one was believed, according to UN spokesman days after Cyclone Kenneth. BBC reports the nation was struck last Thursday by winds that flattened whole villages. Roughly 700,000 people are believed to be at risk in the, areas, at, in the area as heavy rains continue. Destroyed roads have caused operations to stop in most isolated areas. At least five people have died as a result of the cyclone, with nearly 35,000 homes badly damaged or destroyed. One of two suspects on suspicion of spying for the United Arab Emirates has killed himself in prison. The suspect was found hanging in a cell in Silvery Prison, west of Istanbul. He allegedly confessed that he and the other suspect had spied on Arab dis dissidents. According to BBC News, Turkish, Turkish officials that said they were also probing possible links of the murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Turkish officials said that one of the two suspects had arrived in Turkey only a few days after the killing of Khashoggi, while the other suspect arrived later to assist his colleague. 
Ukraine's new president has dismissed an offer by Vladimir Putin to provide passports to Ukrainians. Vladimir Zelensky, the comedian who won the presidential election the previous week, pledged instead to grant citizenship to Russians who suffer under the Kremlin rule. The Russian president said Moscow was considering plans to make it easier for Ukrainians to obtain Russian citizenship. According to The Guardian, Zelensky responded to Putin's offer in a statement on Facebook last Saturday. The, sa the statement pledged to give citizenship to representatives of all nations that suffer from authoritarian and corrupt regimes, but first and foremost to the Russian people who suffer most of all. In the post, Zelensky warned Russia not to speak with Ukraine in terms of threats or military or economic pressure. A white whale wearing a strange harness that harassed boats in the Arctic may have been trained by Russia's military, according to Norwegian fishermen and scientists. The harness was removed from the whale by a team from the Norwegian Director of Fisheries. Images and videos were sent to CBS News of the whale and the harness. The harness has a logo on it that reads Equipment of St. Petersburg. There is no indication the harness was linked to Russia's military, although Norwegian scientists suspect a link to the Russian Navy nonetheless. According to CBS News, Russia's military has a history of trying to weaponize whales and other sea mammals. Cold War era Soviet Union had a program to train animals such as seals, dolphins, and other animals to detect underwater weapons and alert their military trainers. That's what's happening in the news world this week. Stay tuned for a sports update with Haley White when we return. The Tiger Media Network is Fort Hayes State University's independent student media organization. It's a, a student employment opportunity where you can work for either the news side or the sports side. So you can be on live sports production, which produces all of the live sports broadcasts that we do, or you could be on the news side and do news stories covering things on campus, so presidential announcements, student government association. We bring that news uh, to the student community and the Hayes community as well. You don't realize how much Fort Hay State has to offer until you're here. I mean, it is definitely, uh, this is a land of opportunity here. I just got back from the MIAA tournament in Kansas City a couple weeks ago where we worked with um, other production crews including Pitt State and Central Missouri. And it's a great time. I've gone there the last couple years. For me anyway, I get to do sports, which is what I love. And if live production is where that's at. This is the perfect place to do it. We have almost everything that you could possibly imagine. Uh, Tiger Media Network allows you the opportunity to take the skills you've learned and put them forward in a real world, real application setting that allows you to flourish and grow as a professional and that will only help you and benefit you when you graduate and go into the real world workforce. Hello Tigers, I'm Haley White bringing you a sports update. A couple matchups within the conference prevented Fort Hayes softball from making the cut into the MIAA tourney, regardless of its efforts during Saturday's doubleheader as the Tigers swept Nebraska Kearney and Hayes. Northeastern State rallied to sweep Missouri Southern and Pittsburgh State picked up a victory over number one nationally ranked and MIAA regular season champion Central Oklahoma to keep the Tigers out of the tournament field. However, the Tigers did end their conference season on a high note as head coach Adrian Pilkington picked up her 100th win of her coaching career at FHSU. Fort Hayes closed out the season against the Lopers with a pair of non-conference games in Kearney, where the team responded from the day before by sweeping the Tigers 2-1 and 12-4 to end the 2018-19 season. Fort Hayes had four players named to the All-MIAA team for the season. 
sophomore catcher Sarah Breckbill, junior pitcher Haley Chapman, sophomore outfielder Taryn Caldwell, and junior shortstop Lily Sale were the 2019 honorees. Breckbill finished the season leading the team with the 16 extra base hits while trailing second on the team in runs scored with 32. Chapman earned all MIAA honors for the first time in her career as she led the conference in strikeouts with 174 and was one of only five players in the MIAA with at least 100 on the season. Caldwell claimed a team best performance at bat with 54 hits, 34 runs scored, and 10 stolen bases. Sale earns this honor for the first time in her career after, finish, after finishing with just 11 airs in the field, which is the second fewest among shortstops throughout the MIAA. Sale became the fourth player in program history to collect 300 over defensive assists in her career as she claimed 301 this season. Fort Hayes baseball has a home series ahead as the Tigers will take on Pittsburgh State in a three-game series to wrap up the 2018 and 19 season at Larks Park. FHSU enters the final matchup with a 3-37 overall record with two MIAA wins coming from Southwest Baptist and Emporia State earlier in March. The Tigers' last win came from a non-conference contest against Northwestern Oklahoma State over a month ago. The series against the Gorillas is slated to begin Friday evening at 7, followed by a 2 p.m. start on Saturday and a noon start to the series and, in this, and the season finale. After posting nearly a 78-stroke average this season, FHSU senior golfer Hannah Perkins has qualified to play as an individual at the 2019 NCAA D2 Central Regional at the Muscogee Country Club in Oklahoma next week. Perkins is the first Tiger in program history to make three appearances at regionals. She'll tee off at 8.30 a.m. in the first round, 10.10 a.m. in the second, and 9.20 a.m. in the third round. FHSU Track and Field's Brett Meyer has been named the MIAA Track Athlete of the Week for the second time this season after the runner's efforts at the Drake Relays over the weekend where he was the only collegiate athlete in the mile race. Meyer clocked a 4.07 finish as he claimed fourth place. Meyer also sits in the number four st spot on the national performance list in the 1500 meters with his automatic qualification mark of 3 minutes and 44 seconds. The MIAA Outdoor Track and Field Championships is slated for this weekend where Meyer and the Tigers will compete at Central Missouri. A record high of 40 trades were made during the 84th annual NFL Draft last week as more than 47.5 million people tuned in to the event in Nashville, where, which was the most views the NFL Draft has had in league history. Oklahoma quarterback Kyler Murray was the first pick of the evening as the 2018 Heisman Trophy winner was drafted to the Arizona Cardinals. The Kansas City Chiefs had to wait 55 slots and an entire round before announcing its first pick of the evening where Georgia wide receiver McCole Hardman ultimately landed a spot on the 2019 KC roster. Although no Tigers were to be drafted over the weekend, FHSU senior defensive back Doyen Jabowu received an invite to the Chicago Bears rookie minicamp where he looks to be signed by the franchise. Jabowu finished his senior campaign with 57 tackles, including six for loss, two interceptions, one sack, and 11 pass breakups. He was a three-time All-MIAA first team selection at defensive back. Tragedy struck Eastern Kansas hours following the draft as two Washburn University football players fell victim to a shooting in Topeka over the weekend. WU deep defensive back Dwayne Simmons was fatally shot and teammate Corey Ballantyne, who was drafted by the New York Giants prior to the shooting, suffered from a gunshot wound but is expected to make a full recovery. A preliminary investigation determined that the shooting occurred during a house party late Saturday in Topeka where dozens of people attended. The police are continuing to work to gather evidence and witness statements regarding the devastation. Conference semifinals are well underway in the 2019 NBA playoffs as the Golden State holds down the West with a two-game advantage over the Houston Rockets and the Denver Nuggets are a game ahead of the Portland Trail Blazers where Game 2 tips off tonight at 5 on TNT. The Warriors and Rockets have a few days to prepare for Game 3 for tip-off is slated for 8.30 p.m. Eastern Saturday on ABC. Both matchups are split on the East as Milwaukee and Boston go into Game 3 with an even slate on Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the 76ers and Raptors look to break the tie tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. 
That concludes this episode of TMN TV. To stay up to date on the latest news and information throughout the week, visit TigerMedianet.com. And always remember, Roar Tigers!